Are you ready? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hey. How are you all doing today? Great. Got a few greats over here. How are you doing on this side over here? Good. No wonderfuls? Wonderful, okay. And the second roll over here? Wonderful, okay. What is that in English? <laughs> it's <a> stupendous, huh? <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Oh, I'm excited today. I don't know why, but I'm excited today to be alive and alert and full of vim and vigor and all that good stuff. So anyway, we open our service every Sunday with prayer giving God all the glory and the praise and blessing those that are in need of, of some assistance through prayer. And we know that there's power in the spoken word through prayer. So as we just close our eyes for a moment, taking a deep breath and center ourselves and think about yourselves. If you are in need of uh, some assistance there or some, something going on in your life, just offer that up to God today. Because it's, God says that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. And we're getting conversation going on up there in the upper balcony. Uh, hello. We're having service. Can you fix it quietly? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, do your best. Okay. I went to the hospital this week to visit one of our parishioners, and they're doing well. They don't quite know what's going on with their body, but we prayed, and I left the daily word with them to inspire them through that experience. So calling off names, Judy, Frank and Jenny, blessings. Margaret, blessings. Felix, blessings. 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 Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Willie Jones. Blessings. Michelle. Blessings. And each one of us. Blessings. And as we're still for a moment, just feel that love moving in and through you, blessing every part of your being because you are special. 
God created you just a little less than the angels, and he's placed so much within us. And as we are open and receptive, we, we are let and allow that goodness just be. Thank you, God. Mm. Blessing those that have gone on even. Because they're still with us, loving us, seeing us through. And we all say together, Amen. Ah, thank you. And our soloist today is Augustus Williams. Himself. <laughs> All right. And we are singing our first hymn is 236. Take my life and let it what? Be. Not let it do. <laughs> let it be. Yes, she's playing the melody for you. about surrendering. Take it. It's yours already anyway, God. All right, as we stand and affirm our statement of being, for those that may be new here or for the first time, it's in our bulletin, our statement of being, with a capital B on that, and that's our spirit. Together, God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one power. One power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. 
I am an individualized expression of God. I am an one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. On the back of the bulletin, we affirm together the purpose and mission statement. Together, the purpose of Unity East Church is to teach the universal principles of truth as taught and demonstrated by Jesus Christ and interpreted by unity. Our mission is to rediscover the guiding spirit of God's presence within us and willingly demonstrate his creative purpose in our lives. And as you look on the front of your bulletin, does everybody have this front bulletin? Because last week we had several different ones. Are we all on one page? Does it start with, this is the day? All right, well, let's affirm that too together. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And our next hymn is on 224. We're going to sing this twice. First time is the rehearsal. Okay? <laughs> Get you in voice. Well, good morning. And how are you? Huh? You all right? Well, wonderful. You come to bring new horizons? Okay. <laughs> are you ready for the song? <laughs> and energy now. Out before our view, reaching forward, claiming all things new. We've caught the lofty vision of God's presence everywhere. We turn our backs on past mistakes and find release through prayer. New horizons in our state of mind, reaching forward to what we're sure to find. What we sing with joy, this melody of truth that makes us free. New horizons, we're in unity. Got it? Let's do it again with feeling now. New horizons, I'll be are you claiming all things new? We are the vision and his presence everywhere. We turn our backs on past mistakes and find release through prayer. New horizons in our state of mind. truth that makes us free, new horizon, in oh. <laughs> I love it. All right, before you sit down, you know, we don't just sing and sit down. We hug around here. Say, uh, turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, newness. Good morning, newness. All right. This is a new Good day, morning. and we are new people. Yes, it is yes, history. Yeah, it's a new. Ah. It's a new. Ooh, God bless you today. <laughs> Good morning, newness. <laughs> Good morning. Ah, bless you. All right, I need some newness over here, Annie. Good morning, newness. Uh -huh. Good morning, newness. Ooh, good morning, newness, and you too, newness. <laughs> Newnesses. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yes. Ooh. All right. All right, looking at our purple um, 
and Bill Hare. We're, this is the first Sunday in the month of May, the merry month of May, merry, merry month of May, and the power is power. So we'll be exemplifying power all month, and the color is purple. I see some purple. Uh. <laughs> I can see this. That's green. <laughs> no, <laughs> I see purple here. Now, if you're wondering uh, what, uh, there's a, a sheet on the door just as you're walking out of all the different colors of all the months. So you can peek on that when you're getting ready to go into new months. Say, oh, well, what is it? What is it? It's right there. Okay, and the disciple is Philip. And the location is at the root of the tongue. And what does that mean? The power of our spoken word. So what are you speaking with power? You know, that's coming back to you, breath down, shaking together, and running over. All right. Now, at the bottom here, we affirm together the power and dominion implanted in humanity is over his or her own thoughts, feelings, words, in order to come into a greater God awareness. All right. Isn't that wonderful? All right, today is animal pet blessing. Um, I'm still in the process of moving, so I forgot it was animal pet blessing. And we're going to talk about the power of the spoken word first, and then we will bless our, our loved ones. Um, next Sunday is Father's Day. <laughs> what? Just seeing if you're alert. <laughs> Mother's Day. Uh, do we have any mothers in the house? Okay, whether they came from your body or not, you know. <laughs> All right, wonderful. And then Edgar Casey, um, Sunday, May 1st. That's not quite right. It's every second and fourth Sunday we have our Edgar Casey classes, and they're wonderful. Uh, now, uh-oh, the biggie's coming up this month. This is the month of our dinner and talent show. Well, come on up. <laughs> Get on that train. Do we have a flyer or something that we can hand out? Or pass? Okay, good, good, because I want to take it to the group that I'm working with for that play. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, now we have the 10th Insight uh, audio presentation, uh, May 6th, which is this Tuesday. Um, so see insert on that. And this is it, so you can read about that and get information. Wonderful. Volunteers needed, uh, the needs are followed for ushers or greeters and uh, welcoming a committee and for streaming. We have a new streamer back there, give him a hand. This is his first time. He said, I wanna do something here, you know, to help out. And so he's uh, manning the camera. All right, wonderful. Now we have the tote bags in the, uh, please place your order for the $7 tote bags and it's a sign up sheet in the bookstore. And they've got the Daily Words for May on sale here for $2.95. Normally, they're $6, so pick that up. 
I went to the hospital this week to pray with someone, and I was led to take mine with me, so I had to get another one this morning. I left that with the young man there so he can have something on a day-to-day -day basis to inspire him through that experience. Uh, new member badges are now available uh, on the badge board by the front door. Oh, you got yours? Okay. All right, now on May 23rd, movie night, The Life of Pi. Not P I E, Pi, P I. So don't come expecting to eat pie. <laughs> I love it. Ongoing classes we got Tai Chi on Wednesday, and we've got Bible on Thursday. Still wishing to seal the cracks in the parking lot and new striping. So we need some figures on that so we can know what we're looking at. Please bring in your toiletry articles for the homeless. They're still out there, you know. Uh, and we will distribute that uh, on the last Monday of the month. Uh, first timers, please sign our guest register in the foyer there. Foyer or foyer? Foyer there. Uh, so we can uh, let you know what's going on here. And please let us know if you're ill, uh, hospitalized, or need assistance. Well, I got an email this week to know that the young man was in the hospital because they didn't have my number. Well, my number is right there by our prayer chest, right there by the, uh, the door there as soon as you walk out. So get my card, and it's my cell phone on there, uh, and so we can be in touch with each other because we, we're here for each other. That's what we're here for, to give service to each other. Uh, and before I go into our Every Day is Every Way, I'd like for this young lady here, a new author, one of our own. Uh, she had an experience with her mother. She took care of her for years, and then her mother passed. And that experience she has, has written down to help others that may be going through. Let's give her a microphone. Okay. Let me see the cover. Here's the cover. It's called Birthing Death. Give her a hand. And guess whose picture is in it? That would be the glamour shot of Reverend Larry. Oh, I'm in there? Ooh, one of those good shots, too. <laughs> Go ahead. My family spent 27 days up on the hospice hospital ward. And when you're in that situation, every breath your loved one takes, you wonder if it's their last. And it's a, just an incredibly intense experience. When I went to the waiting room to catch my breath, as so many must do, there's all the creature comforts there, but I often thought there needs to be more in this waiting room than a TV and a cup of coffee and a magazine to read. And that's what prompted my wanting to write about this experience. And so rather than me uh, telling you what it's about, I'm going to read one of the uh, endorsers who was the hospital chaplain that worked with me and my family. And she says, throughout the past 19 years as a parish minister and police and hospital chaplain, I have never before encountered such a courageous journey into the realm of living and dying. I was privileged to be a part of this voyage, and the imprint that it has left in me gives light and life to my faith. The author shares her experience as a longtime caregiver, elder care lawyer, patient advocate, and grieving daughter, so that others might find comfort, hope, and needed resources during one of life's most challenging times, the death of a loved one. She invites the reader to understand many of the feelings and faith issues that surfaced during her mother's death, the family conflicts that can complicate and bless this time of loss, and yes, I had a family conflict over deciding end-of-life care, and to consider some of the questions and answers relevant for hospital, hospice, and griever care when facing illness, hospitalization, and death. This book offers honest, first-hand experience with practical advice. The book can be a great comfort and a useful tool while passing through the arduous and sacred process of losing, loving, and living again in new and creative ways that honor the memory of our loved ones. So they are available in the bookstore, and if you have any questions, I'm certainly around. Thank you. And who are you? I'm Sue. <laughs> 
Thank you. Uh, uh, excuse me, Sue, Sue, Sue. Uh, 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 give it up. Mm -hmm. We just don't pray and run. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Wonderful. See, you never know these experiences that we go through. Sometimes we may label it or put a title on it for one reason. But there's a divine plan in everything that happens in our lives, whether we understand it at the time or not. But when we have that hindsight and pray over it, as God will lead us through any and every experience in our lives. Um, can I get somebody to volunteer for the daily word? Somebody that's brave and tenacious, tenacious. All right, here she comes, Miss America. <laughs> and the title is One Mind. Thank you. One Mind. I am one with divine mind. There is but one mind. It is indivisible. It is the only authentic power in the, uni in the universe. Yes. Divine mind is the presence in which I live, move, and have my being. Yes. Yet I may occasionally fall prey to confusion, mm. suffering, or falsely believing that I am operating alone and separate from God. In reality, I am never apart from God. Yes. Spirit is the very substance of my life the intelligence infusing my every act. Through prayer and meditation, I remember I am one with God now and always. I align my mind with divine mind and bask in the realization that the seeming two are inextricable. Inextricable. <laughs> inexplicable. No. It's not that one? No. Inextricably. Wow, it doesn't Big matter. word. One <laughs> love, one joy, one mind, one life. Make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Philippians 2, verse 2. Uh, thank you. Now, if we will, um, who knows our uh, every day and every way? Would like to come up here and share this with you. Come on up, Roseanne. Okay. You take that side, and I'll take this side. Okay. We're, this is our cheerleader here. Now we all know the words, right? Every day and every way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's just get your hands together. And, and move your body around. You know, we're not here to sleep. You can do that when you get home <laughs> tonight. But anyway, together, every day, in every way, I am better and better. Why? For only God's good happens to me and through me. Got it? Oh, how does that feel? Oh, that's all right. It's all good. No mistakes. Together. Every day, in every way, I am better and better. For only God's good happens to me and through me. And once more for the Holy Spirit, every day, in every way, I am better and better. For only God's good happens to me and through me. Ah, give her a hand. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Love it, love it, love it. My truth, there is nothing I can be, nothing I can do, nothing I can't have. I am guided. I do have the power. The universe, God, is conspiring on my behalf. I am the creator and not the reactor of my life. The genius within me is released. I am now fulfilling my destiny. Thank you, God. Our newsletter is out. Paul did a wonderful job. And thank you for the articles that you have sent in to share with us 
uh, and the pictures uh, that this young man, Mike, has taken of us as uh, he sneaks up on us and gets those good shots when we're not looking. <laughs> They're wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Helen. That a wonderful article. And then you've got some insight of the different services for the months. All right, wonderful. And then if you want to see any of our services that we've had for about four or five weeks, uh, go to this page and type this into your computer, UEC for Unity East Church, tv.com, and you can pull up these services to inspire you and to share with other friends. Now, one lady came up to me and said, listen, you were talking about getting your, a picture of your aura taken so you can see what, anyway, they're having a holistic festival this weekend coming, May 9th, 10th, and 11th at uh, Gibraltar Trade Center over here uh, in Mount Clemens. And if you go to, for free admission on Friday and type this in your computer, you get free admission, at, but it's only $3, I think, or something like that. But if you want to see what your aura looks like around you and how you're doing, uh, check that out. Next weekend coming in. All right, all minds in order. Let's take everything out of our lap and prepare for meditation by singing our Lord's Prayer. Thank you, God. Giving thanks today. we clear our throats, just letting go of any stuff that is in our power center. Letting it go, and we say in our minds, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for life today. Thank you, God, for life right now. For we now turn our thoughts to this moment. And we breathe deeply, becoming aware of the presence of God within each of us. And with each inhale, we relax more fully. And with each exhale, we release the concerns of the day, just letting it go. As I spoke before, it's not yours, it's God's. And with each breath that we take in, we're breathing in the good, clean, rich air, the breath of God, in breathing us, actually. And as we release more and more stuff within our being, this is just leaving, moving out. 
And if there's any areas in your body temple, I want you to breathe in the next breath and with your imagination, see a white golden cloud just hovering over your head. You have marvelous imagination. You can either see it, feel it, sense it, but know that it is there. And as I continue to speak words of wisdom and power, see that cloud just moving down through the very top and top of your hair, the top of your head, and just totally encompassing your brain. And in that cloud, there's healing. That golden thread, the golden essence there is healing. Those thoughts that you've been holding on to this week that have been worrying you or you're concerned about, just let them be right now. Let the Spirit of God just administer to those thoughts. Peace, peace, peace. For God is the author and finisher of all there is and is moving through you right here, right now. So let go and trust that God knows your divine plan for your life. And take in another deep breath and see that cloud moving from encompassing your brain, but moving down and touching your eyebrows, your eyes, your wonderful eyes. And although you have your eyes closed, you have inner eyes that are always open to your inner kingdom, the Spirit of God within you, your super consciousness. And see that light moving down your cheekbones, your throat, your lips, chin, all the way down to your shoulders, just letting it be. You feel it, you sense it, you see it. And then it's just spilling over your arms, your shoulders, and into your upper arms, all the way down to your fingertips. And just moving your fingertips very slowly, letting it fill every one of your fingers. And as you're taking another deep, rich, 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 relaxing breath. See the golden light moving down your chest and upper back at the same time, encompassing your heart, going into your heart and just moving throughout your whole system through your blood vessels, sending love, sending peace, sending healing, sending joy, sending peace, a peaceful joy throughout your body temple as the light continues to move down, down. As I say these words to you, let them be your reality. I would reveal to you a secret whereby you can bring all things under your feet. See that light moving down. And standing conqueror over all circumstances, it is a secret of giving thanks, giving thanks constantly, to rejoice, to give thanks, to give praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For every circumstance, whether we, whether the appearance we approve of or not, thank you, God, for this circumstance. In every move of your life, lift your heart in thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for this too shall pass. Whatever it is in my experience, I bless it and I lovingly release it on its way, but thank you, God, right now. So as we praise, we raise our consciousness, and thus you release God's power into your life, and you link yourself with this great force. For in the true heart-lifting thanksgiving, not just the mumbling of words, you reach that faith which removes mountains and gives you, as you give thanks for what you have and what you have not. And as you give thanks, you know you have and you do have. Thank you, God. So when you know it is you, Give your praise 
to the God of your being. And you shall realize just how much you have of God's goodness and protection. And to him who hath shall be given more of God's love. God's joy, peace. So practice this and see what miracles shall take place for you. Practice makes better. Now, my child, the day's duties lie before you. But for just a few moments, let's just sit in this essence of love and be, and just be at peace. A peace that passes all understanding, just be. It's all right. In the stillness of this moment, in the silence, Thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for that needed finance, that extra finance. Thank you for that healing, this healing. Name it, claim it, be it. Name it, claim it. Give thanks for your perfection that we spoke about earlier, that God is, because God lives, moves, and has its being in you. Accept it right here, right now because it's always now. Walk your talk and talk your walk. Thank you, God. As we take in another deep breath and come back to this place, space, and time, oh, thank you, God. Feeling renewed. Feeling renewed. Thank you. Feeling renewed. Thank you. As we sing our congregational response, may the words of my mouth power, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Thank you. Blessing Felix right now. Thank you. Blessing Brian right now. Thank you. Hallelujah.
a man ain't got a friend unless God gives him a song. That field of corn would be deserted now. That field of corn ain't never seen a plow. A man is born, but he's no good unless God gives him a song. I've got my trouble and woe, sure as I know, the Jordan will roll. I'll get along as long as the song is down in my soul. What makes the rain to fall? I'll never know. What makes the grass so tall? I only know there ain't no love at all without a song. I've got my trouble and woe. And sure as I know, the Jordan will I'll get along as long as the song is down in my soul. Never, 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 I never knew what makes the rain to fall. Never knew what makes the grass so tall. I only knew there ain't no love at all without a Absolutely, positively wonderful. It's my German coming out. Anyway, could you take out this gold sheet and then turn it over so you cannot see the words because you have it memorized, right? T. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, my kid is going today, and I'm so glad about it. Anyway, we are now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of light, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit. In thy divine wisdom now, erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. Amen. And so it is. We are in the merry, merry month of May. My talk title for today um, is God gives unto you what? Power. Power. Now, Webster says that power is the ability to do or act with vigor, with force, with strength or legal authority. I have the power to sign this check for a million dollars with your name on it. Huh? <laughs> Don't forget to tie. <laughs> now, uh, the revealing word goes a little deeper spiritually, metaphysically. It says that man is the power of God in action. Man, woman, is the power of God 
in action. For see, God is spirit, and we are God's hands and feet. Now, to man is given the highest power in the universe, the conscious power of thought. The conscious power of thought. Now, this thought is elemental, and all its attributes come under the dominion of man. What are you thinking? So now when he cooperates, or when we cooperate with principle, which is God, which is the law, universal law, man sits on the throne of his authority, and the elemental forces are subject to him. When he cooperates with principle, now, God's gift to man is power, power and dominion over all created things. His mind, your body, your affairs. Now, but man sometimes imagines or thinks and pictures in his mind himself weak. And the victim of circumstances claiming that conditions over which he has no control caused his defeat. Man by himself indeed is a victim of circumstance, but linked with God's power, all things are... I didn't hear you. All right, now we, wake up. <laughs> Class is in session. <laughs> You want your A, don't you, or your star? <laughs> okay, wonderful. Through a knowledge of metaphysics, we are discovering, discovering, because everything is already here. We are discovering how this can be done, and it is by your word. By your word. What are you creating with the power of your word? It's a thought first. Remember we spoke about the thought a little while ago? Thoughts held in mind do what? Produce after their kind, right. Okay, so, and then that thought, we form it and there are words. Now, you contact this power through your word. Then miraculously, every burden is lifted and every battle is won. Okay? Now, we forget. We forget. Last week, I received my check from here and I said, okay, good. I'm going to buy a new car this week so I can use that for my down payment. Well, I got home and I couldn't find that check all week. I looked in that bag about 20 times, went through every sheet, opened up all the plastic and everything. I said, I know you're in here. I put you in here Sunday in my office and I have only brought you home and put you in my office here so I know you're in there. Well, last night while I was working on my talk for the day at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I said, I need that check. Spirit spoke to me and said, turn around. I turned around. I got the bookcases up in my office now. At least I got a couple of them up. And I said, I had my Bible with me last week. So I turned around went to the Bible, and here it is. In the Bible. Then wore it myself out all week trying to find that. Forgetting that, I forgot to ask. I did ask. I did ask. But I was not in a, a, a realm of mind to receive. Okay, so I was missing my blessing there. I was asking, and but anyway, we get all these experiences all the time to re show us how God moves in our lives. When you get still and open and receptive, the answer is already there waiting for you. Hello. Now, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So watch your words with all diligence, uh, for you are continually reaping the fruit of your word. And as he that overcometh and keep my works to the end, to him will I give power and dominion over the nations. I said, what does that mean? The nations, all the thoughts that we have, because these are all peoples, all these are thoughts. Uh, over the nations. Overcoming means to conquer all doubt, to conquer all fear, to conquer negative vibrations. What's the word there? 
conquer. And all that he overcometh and keepeth my word to the end, he will give him the power and dominion over that. Now one man, with perfect peace and perfect poise, filled with love and goodwill, can dissolve all negative vibrations. Okay? Peace be still and know. Now they would melt away like snow under the sun. Jesus said, all power is given unto me to bring heaven un upon the earth. Now let us, let me give thanks that this is now coming to pass. For evil is unreal and leaves no stain. This God power is within you. It is your superconscious mind. We have our superconscious, we have our conscious, and we have our subconscious. I'm speaking to you on a conscious level right now, and you're picking it up on, and you're taking it into, and you're thinking about it, and you're putting labels on it, and then it's sinking into your subconscious. Sub means under, okay? And when we're trying to get something in our lives, that sub comes up. I think you don't mean that. What did you tell me last week? Now, now you want something different. But anyway, so we have to constantly affirm our good and let it be. Now in the realm of inspiration, revelation, and illumination, it is the realm of miracles and wonders. So quick and seemingly impossible changes take place in a for your good. The doors open where there were no doors. Supply appears from hidden and unexpected channels, for God is the weapon ye know not of. And I was wondering how I was going to, since I'm in my new house, I had to pay my first rent this weekend, and the new car, I put $1,100 down, and all that. I'm saying, God, where are you? And so uh, I went to a banquet and sang at the banquet Friday night. And one of the ministers came up to me and said, uh, did you get that package yet? I said, no. What? He said, you will. So when I got home that night, I looked in my mailbox, and there was a check for $200. I did the Monday Thursday service at their church, and for their gratitude, they sent me a check for $200. I said, oh, this will go well with what I'm doing here. So yesterday, I was running from bank to bank trying to get all this here worked out. But see, I did not expect that. But see, while we're trying to work it out, God has already, already worked it out. So just be open and receptive for your good because it's already there, waiting, knocking at your door. But you have to be open and receptive and in tune with it. And then, it, let me give you an example here. Very well-known woman in England told of this experience. She was asking with great feeling for a realization of God. And these words came to her as she got still. Act as though I were and I am. Act as though I were. Claim your power. Move in your power. Move in your faith. Act as though I were already and I am. Got that? That's powerful. That's powerful. Only active faith impresses the subconscious mind, and unless you impress that subconscious mind, there are no results. Let me give you an example to show you how this law works. <clears throat> there was a, a unity minister was talking with this young lady, and who, her heart's desire was a right marriage and a happy home. And she was very fond of a certain man, and he was a most difficult Person. And after having shown her every intention and devotion, he suddenly changed and dropped out of her life. Well, she was unhappy, she was resentful and discouraged. Now the minister suggested that now is the time to prepare for your happy home. I guess you have said the man and left and everything, and the minister told me, prepare for a happy home. You know, the two just the oil and water, you know. But anyway, buy little things for as, and act as if you don't have a minute to spare. 
So she took her mind off of that, and she became quite interested in shopping for her happy home. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And when all appearances were against her, now the minister said, you'll have to perfect yourself. You'll have to perfect yourself. Now, what do we say in our opening statement? God is perfect, whole, complete, and God is within us, so we have to get into that God godness of ourselves and perfect ourselves and on the situation and become immune to all resentment and unhappiness. Okay? No two things can occupy the same space at the same time. If she's upset, if she's angry, if she's resentful, if she's discouraged and all that, how is she going to create a happy home and do this perfection of herself and, and, and get what she wants. Because as, we, as she thinks about the negative things, she gets more of that because that is what she's thinking about, being co-creator with God. He gave her this statement, I am now immune to all hurt and resentment. I am now immune to all hurt and resentment. My poise is built upon a rock, the Christ within me. My poise. So when you are immune to all hurt and all resentment, this man will be given to you or his equivalents. Can you see that? When, the big word when, you are immune to all hurts. I know it's not the easiest lesson to take in, but, but, if you want that desire, something has to happen. So it took many months when one evening she came to see the minister and said, you know, I have only the kindest and most friendly feelings for this man. Now, if he isn't the divine selection, I would be happy without him. Do you see the shift? If, when, if, when. Not long after, she just happened to meet the man. Just happened to meet the man. Now, where has he been all this other time? She had to release him, and now here he comes. He was so sorry for the way he had acted, he begged her to forgive him. And not long after, they were married, and a happy home came into manifestation. It had built itself around her active faith, her active faith. Only, your only enemies are within yourself. My only enemies are within myself. So the woman's enemies were hurt and resentment. But she had to let that go, work on her perfection let her perfection come forth and forgiveness to be a part of that can you see that open receptive to change had to be a part of that so when you trust in god this gives you irresistible power when you trust when you trust when you trust in god it gives you irresistible power for the supreme intelligent only knows the way of Fulfillment. Trust in me and I will bring it to pass, is what God says. Trust in me and I will. Not maybe, if I would have, could have. If you do three loops and, and put a hula hoop on it. But trust in me and I will bring it to pass. Your health, your prosperity, your relationships, the grace, mercy, peace. Whatever you need, God's got it. It's already there. And if you don't have it yet, what's keeping you from it? What is the lesson here? What is the blessing here? And when you ask the right questions, when you trust and not doubt, you will receive. It is the law. I just wanted to touch a little bit on the idea of power. But today is also Animal Pet Blessing Sunday. And so we come together today to thank God for all the beautiful, beautiful creatures or creation that enhance and enrich our lives. And sometimes we chose them, and most times they chose us. 
Do you know that? Can you see that? We come together, yes, today to bless our animals everywhere. And we come together today to give thanks and to bless our special, special animals. We welcome and honor you on this day. We have a few animals in the house. I saw one going out for a cigarette break. <laughs> uh, where is uh, baby girl? Okay, yes, we'd like to see them and, and to and hear their story. Now, God made the animal. I don't need this one. <laughs> we turn it off so Paul won't jump on me. God made these animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kind, and all the creatures that move along the ground, and the sea, and the air according to their kinds. And God saw each of these creations and called it good with the power of his thought, with the power of his word and called it good. Each animal is created with its own unique characteristics, own habits, own traits and ways of expressing. Do you know that? You try to get that dog to go, okay, this is the paper over here. I want you to go on it like he understands English. He does. <laughs> but it takes a little training and a little coaxing. And listen, I want you to see this kitty litter. I went out and paid good money for this kitty litter box here now. I and the cat looks at you. You must be out of your tree. I'm going over here. No. <laughs> well, come on down, Jessica, and let us, let us hear about this wonderful gift you have. Who is this? Chewy Everett. He has yes. the last name. Yes, he does. Um, he's a toy fox terrier. Toy fox terrier. Yeah. And uh, he loves squirrels and Hi, Chewy. birds. And he just met that other dog. Oh, okay. And it's shocking. He kissed him. Oh, really? And he does not like other dogs because besides Amber and another girl, that's it. Okay. Absolutely. Love it is. Yeah, know? it was really weird because I was like, uh oh, you know, I'm going to be like so careful with him. <laughs> but, you know, they're friends, I guess. Say, hey, that's my buddy, huh? All right. Isn't he beautiful? Where'd you get him? Um, we got him from Jack. I mean, Larry. Larry. Yeah, sorry. Larry Blackwell. Yes. <laughs> okay, gave him to you. And this is like the best thing ever. Really? I know I had a guinea pig, but he passed on. Oh, really? Yes. And that's, this is the best. Okay. Yeah. See, God knows how to oh, yeah. fill and those spots. Oh, yeah. And then when I seen the flyer, I almost called him myself. Ah. Oh. But if I did that and brought a dog home, I think I would get yelled at by my parents. Okay. Well, <laughs> all right. Without their permission. Oh, wonderful. Well, you're a handsome young man. Hey. Yeah. You want to say something? Okay. <laughs> Give her a hand. <laughs> All, right. All right. Now, who is this handsome young fella here? Harley. Who? Harley. Harley Davidson, like the motorcycle? Yes. Oh, okay. Hi, Harley. Harley, can you sit down? Turn around. All right. Can you get it? Ah. Uh, yeah, who is he? Uh, he's, he's Harley. This is Harley, everybody. What kind and of? Uh, he is a puggle. He's a mix between a pug and a beagle. He is um, about two and a half years old, and he is the best dog ever. I, um, he goes to school, which is daycare. Um, come on. <laughs> come on, Harley. Can you, can you sit down? Come here. Come here. Sit down. Sit down, honey. Sit. Good boy. And... Um, He's been through training classes. Um, he loves children. He just loves children. And uh, he's just um, very, very good. He's, it was one of the best songs I've, I've ever owned. We got him out in Kalamazoo. Um, we paid seven fifty for him, and he came with a chip. And, uh, a and, chip? And, yep, and he came neutered, yeah. So, which was What's good. a chip? A chip is... Um, 
where I don't have to, if he ever runs off or somebody tries to steal him, oh. he's already um, located, you know, um, in the police system. So, yeah. Okay, wonderful. I don't ever have to worry about, you know, um, so when they go to look for Puggles, then, you know, he's already, he's already got a good, um, a good grip on him already. Mm. Yeah, he, I just love my dog. I just, you know, some people say, Shannon, he is the king. And I just think, yeah, he is. He's like my best friend. <laughs> you know, I just treat him, um, you know, like uh, he's, he's my favorite little furry friend, you know. And, uh, yeah, so thanks. Ah, you're welcome. Give her a hand. And Harley. <laughs> Are your children that obedient when you tell them to sit? Well, think back. I know they're all grown and <laughs> You forgot to bring a picture of Lenny? Oh, wow. Okay, go home and get it, Annie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Annie, she has a cat, and he just runs the neighborhood. Male cat, all the ladies be sitting out there. Lenny, Lenny, where is Lenny? <laughs> Say what? Lenny's been busy. <laughs> wow, you love him, though. Oh, come on up. Here's Deb Vidmar with her pictures of her loved ones. Ah, who are they? This is Bonnie. I call her Buddha Bonnie. Buddha Bonnie. She's gotten somewhat overweight. And her sister, Taffy, was Taffy the Terror. She's into anything and everything. So these are my girls. All right, how long have they had? Um, I've had them since well, seven years now. They're eight years old. How'd you get them? I got them from a rescue, and uh, I was very misled when I got them. They were actually feral, and I didn't know until I got them home and didn't see them for several days. But they've come along very well now. They're my girls. They're my fuzzy friends. You have pictures here. Hi. <laughs> this is my cat, Miranda. She's 15 and a half years. Well, I've had her 15 and a half years. She's going to be 17 in uh, August. Um, I got her uh, from a rescue, and um, there was another cat that was, they were in cages, and this one looked kind of sad. They, there was another one that was all frisky, and I know she wasn't going to be good for my apartment. <laughs> so even though my son wanted that one, I got this one, and she's been a pretty good companion, and uh, I love her very, very much. So all right. Okay. And her name is Jim? Miranda. Miranda. All right. She's got kidney issues. Okay, we're going to pray with and for her. Yes. Here's Bill and Dottie's cat. Oh, let's look at that. Oh, laying on her back, just going. <laughs> Would you want to come up here and tell us something? Ah, ah, ah. the microphone and let us hear about what yeah, our cat's name is Isabella named by our grandchildren we call her kitty but when she oh. when she I sleeps why. she lies on her back and curls up her feet in her paws and when she gets hungry we keep her dish in the kitchen underneath a cover underneath the cabinet and when she's hungry she goes and lays on the floor next to the food and one time she went and opened up Ah. Now, is that intelligence or what? Feed me. <laughs> She's a pretty good cat. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> How old is she, Bill? Uh-huh. How old is she? Nine months young. Yeah, I'm on my way over there. 
Uh-oh. Carolyn, come, come up. Have a seat. Who do we have here? This gorgeous dog. I he was here last year, wasn't he? Yeah. And he kept talking to me. He says, Mama. He just says, Mama. Mama, right. This is Jack Kennedy. I've had four dogs, and they're all named after presidents. Uh, Harry S. Truman, Teddy Roosevelt, John Quincy Adams, and Jack Kennedy. Oh, right. right. He was a good dog. So he passed away in November, so. How long did you have him? I had, he was a rescue dog. Rescue so dog. he was four when I got him. So I had him for about five years. So that was good. Okay. And I recommend anybody, if you're getting a pet, get a rescue pet because they're the best. It's almost like they know that you saved them. Other ones that you pay five, eight hundred dollars for, they're spoiled. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so I kind of took over the whole thing here. Well, that's all right. There's yeah, a couple other here. pictures up there. My friend Shirley's dog is up there. And I'd like to thank Mike and Linda for this picture that they took of, of Jack. Yeah. He looks better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you about your dog. I know. <laughs> this is Sandy. She's 11 now. Uh, she was a stray. I had the. Uh, She's still alive. Uh, I had a Yorkie. I was 12. And a 19 year old cat. And I was having heart surgery. And I had, had, had her in the hospital. And the doctor said I, we couldn't save her. She had a large heart. So the next day I come home in the hospital. This was Sandy. Laying on my doormat. And uh, she curled up there and I said, go away, I don't want no more pets. Next morning she was still there. I said, okay. Let's, I took her to the, <laughs> I took her to vets and she had heartworm, a slight case, but I had her treated and she's doing fine now. And um, she, she's been a guy. See how God works things out through. Animals, I had were all strays. Uh -huh. I lived about out by uh, MIS. They had motorcycles and all kinds of cars. And I lived three miles from there. So somebody cut her loose knowing that she had heart. She was only six months. She's 11 now, 77. Uh -huh. And I'm 79. So she's going to pass me next year. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Love she is. Love it. Is. She was God's in it, I swear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jojo, and most of you might see me sometimes out there walking her, and she's a beagle. Well, last year she was overweight, so the doctor decided he was going to put her on a diet. So the diet he put her on, she did lose, she lost 10 pounds. And he has her walking, and um, he has her, you know, uh, doing different things, like uh, I have to give her uh, Benadryl because out here, the grass, she's allergic to grass, she's just like a human. And 
get allergies. And now she has allergies. So I said, well, Lord, I was going to get rid of her. And I said, well, God, I'm not going to do that. Because I don't want nobody to get rid of me because I get sick. So, <laughs> so I still have her. And the reason I didn't bring her today is because I'm going to try to train her to come over here with me. And when I get finished, so we can sit in the bookstore together. But she's a beagle, and she's four years old. And I knew she was not going to sit there and just be still. So... This is JoJo. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Ah, okay, Sue. This is JoJo number two. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's so interesting in, in this congregation how, how important our furry friends are to us and that so many are rescues. And, and JoJo is no exception. I got him when he was eight. He's now 14, and he is going through early kidney failure. And, and you know, stuff like that just breaks my heart. But he, he, uh, I've rescued him, and he's rescued me. He, he is such a companion. Thank you. His name's JoJo, too. They call me big dog sometimes. <laughs> oh my uh -oh. Yes, please. Thank you. It's just to tell a joke, another joke. Huh? And sometimes you cannot tell the night from day. Still the hope that lies within is reassuring. And I'll keep my eyes upon that distant shore. I know it lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared and if the storm don't cease 
Sometimes you cannot tell the night from day. Still, the hope that lies within is reassured. And I'll keep my eyes upon that distant shore. I know it leads me safely. That blessed place he has prepared And if the storms don't cease And just in case the wind keeps blowing in my There's a long part I wasn't going to sing all of that. <laughs> Thank you. The soul has been anchored in the. Well, this goes in here. This is mine. Oh, wonderful. Somebody gave me a gift. Oh, thank you, God. Let me come down here. Yes. Father, Mother, God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we know that as we praise, we raise our consciousness to be open and receptive, to receive more of your goodness, more of your godness. And we bless everyone that has come out today, and we're blessing our streaming family, and push that donation button there so you can be a part of this experience also. And we just are so grateful today, so grateful. Bless our animal friends, bless our, our human friends also. Just blessing, 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 for love it is. Love it is. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ah, thank you. Hmm, I love that song. <laughs> Do we have any first timers here today? Ah, won't you stand? And wait a minute, let me get the microphone so we can hear who you are. All right. And you, we'll stand. It's all right. And you are? 
Linda Palkovich. Linda, we have another Linda here. <laughs> Linda, Linda. <laughs> and how'd you hear about it? Um, I actually looked you up in the Yellow Pages. Ah, um, wonderful. I just recently moved and was looking for a new church. I was going to a church in Lapeer. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it closer to you? Yep, yep. We just recently moved, so. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. Thank you. We're going to give you a healing blessing here in a minute. And uh, how can I get to you? Give her the microphone. <laughs> and who are you? I'm Mother Alice Jones. Mother Alice Jones, okay. And how did you happen to come today? Okay, I'm the guest of um, Barbara and Kathy. Ah, wonderful. Well, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the service. And we'll come back again. Let's give them our <laughs> unity blessing. And don't mess it up, Nancy. <laughs> Would you stand back? What's the word? We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Now let's do it. Rub those hands together. Get that energy going. This is a new shirt and it keeps popping up. Down, boy, down. Anyway, <laughs> we love you. We bless you. We appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. All right. God bless you. <laughs> Wonderful, and welcome. And since you're new, you can be first in the cookie line. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, let's stand and sing our peace song. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Well, while you're standing, let's sing happy birthday. voices for our talent show. <laughs> Father, Mother, God, we say thank you for this glorious day. 
honoring ourselves with the power of our spoken word, creating newness, miracles in our lives, and, our, and honoring our special friends, our pets, our animals, our best buddies. <laughs> and we say together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. For wherever we are, God is, and all is. Now hug somebody. <laughs>